I'm going to record and then share my screen again. Okay. So anybody that is not able to attend today, that can, they can attend uh, with us uh, at a later stage by watching the video. I know quite a few people let me know already that they weren't able to uh, come at this time. All right. So um, as I say, more about the little pink um, bag in a bit. And just a reminder, I can't tell you how many times this summer I've been wearing these dresses. They are the Jolly Maxi dress, and they are all made with ITY knits. So you would think that they would not breathe and would um, be hot. But honestly, with this terrible heat, these lovely, long, flowy dresses have been absolutely wonderful. And I've been wearing them a lot. And then, of course, I had enough fabric to make a pair of panties out of the uh, one on the right. So just a reminder that that sew along is under classes on my website. And then um, I just wanted to give a quick little report back on the bra sewing bee. Um, some of you I know attended, like I know Anne attended, and there could well be others of you that attended. Linda's nodding her head. Yep. Um, I, it was absolutely magical. And apparently I had a message yesterday or this morning telling me that some people missed me at the bra B. And I thought, really? I was moderating for days, if not weeks before the, the B. And I was in and out of my booth and in and out of the rooftop. I don't know how somebody missed me, but anyway. I was there the entire time. <laughs> and uh, one of the little talks I did on the rooftop was about making your own lace for your lingerie. And um, as a result of the bra bee, I've been thinking about it for a while. And I thought that it would be really good to have a, another group similar to this, but just for lingerie sewing. So I did put something on social media and um, I also have sent out some emails, but if you are interested, let me know. I have actually set up a, a group, just the initial group. It won't necessarily stay at that date or time. Um, and that's for next Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m. And we will record it and I will send the recording out because I've got people as far away as the UK wanting to be involved in this group. And obviously it might be the middle of the night for them. So I will record it and um, we will, I want you next week, if you're planning on attending, um, I want you to let me know if you haven't already let me know. I did send out one batch of emails already with the Zoom code um, and I'm getting ready to send out another batch of emails. Um, what I want you to do is come to that group meeting with your ideas about what you want to see the group being. Because to tell you the honest truth, I don't have time to prepare for two completely separate free groups per month. So I view it, and this is what we'll discuss next week if you view it the same, I view it as more of a show and tell and a question time and exchanging ideas rather than me preparing a whole presentation ahead of time. So as I say, you come next week with all your ideas and we'll thrash it all out and decide where to from there. Okay, so the bra B was brilliant. Um, I have made a few things. Um, I did the Olivia bralette, um, uh, which is a pattern from a lady in Sweden. And those are the two that I made before the bra B started, <laughs> because I honestly, once the bra B started, I was just like crazy running in three directions. So I did not stick to the instructions, as I reckon there's always one in every class. So it's actually supposed to be made with rigid lace and rigid uh, bra cup lining. And I didn't do that. I used stretch lace and Obviously, the fit was a little different, but I am very happy with my two uh, bralettes and I will be wearing them. Okay, and then I also, just before the bra B, 
um, cut off my Freya bra, which is a, a pinup girls bra maker's supply in Hamilton, Ontario. And I was blown out of the water because the first, you know, sometimes if any of you have made a bra and you get to the point where you're trying it on, you've now got the hook and eye on and you've got more or less everything done. And I put that bra on and it fitted me almost like a glove. There are a couple of tiny tweakings that I need to make, but I'm not going to make them to this bra. I'm going to make them to the next one. So I'm absolutely thrilled with that. I think the style fits me. So that didn't really have anything to do with the bra B, but it was made sort of around the time. And then I'm waiting for the sister bra, which is called the Frida, to arrive. Can you see the difference between the two? The free, uh, Frida bra is a partial band bra. And on the Freya, I made the, the band as skinny, skinny, skinny as I possibly could. But it still kind of digs me in my ribs. So I want to get a partial band bra and see if that's going to um, fit me better. All right. So um, are you perhaps ready, Irina? Um, I'm just going to have to figure out how to share and make you um, a co-host. But I oh, think it's okay. We can just talk. No, no. I, I, there you are. There you are. Go ahead. <laughs> Hi, both of you. I, I didn't realize I was going to see both of you. So great. Thank you. And um, everybody, this is <laughs> Irina and Erin. Um, from Fab Cycle, and they are going to tell you all about their enterprise. I've been there many times, and I promise you, Erin, I'll come and fetch my parcel next week, together with the one I ordered last <laughs> week. Just been too busy with the bra bee. Anyway, over, I to, totally over to you, understand. ladies. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, where are you all from? Is it all from Metro Vancouver or, or all over Canada? Uh, we also think we may have some from the States. I'm not sure. Awesome. Wonderful. Well, pleasure to meet you. Um, yeah, so actually I will maybe like, uh, oh, Vancouver Island. Perfect. Thank you. So maybe I'll just give you a bit of a tour. And then if you have questions, just ask as they come in and because we'd love to answer them. So um, I will actually flip the camera so you can see a bit better. Uh, here it is. Ah, okay. So we are at our, uh, what we call the reuse center in Vancouver. Um, it's, uh, we're in Chinatown in Vancouver, where we have all uh, materials that we collect from the local industry. So everything here is considered to be textile waste. Um, this is all was heading to Glasgow. And what we do is that we connect to uh, like a film industry. Oh, <gasps> yeah, it's pretty wild. I know, look at this, isn't it beautiful? Oh. Yeah, Liz saw that. Oh my god. <laughs> called, uh, oh, it was a name the fabric, so it's named something online. I think it might have been like, you are my everything or something like that. Anyway. Yeah, but just, we just wanted to show you around a little bit of space. Uh, Liz's been here, as it was mentioned many times before. We have another space, like with the storage, we have a warehouse. This is the organized space. And let me tell you, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Um, so we usually get materials that are a lot of times like just like random bundles and all we have to do is continue organizing them. Um, so it's a lot of work, as I'm sure you know, because I'm sure you also have your own sewing spaces um, and it's just maintaining the space that's like a whole different job. Um, I mean, I like buying things is a one work job, making things is another and then organizing things like a whole third one. So I, yeah, so for example, this is a donation we got, uh, when was it, a couple of days ago? We still haven't gotten to it because it's just, uh, you know, <laughs> it's just exhausting to look at it. <laughs> but uh, we'll get to it. So we weigh it to make sure like we can um, have some of idea of how much weight we've collected because that's the only metric we can actually follow up easiest. So uh, we keep track of how much waste we've diverted. But everything else, all we do is literally organizing. So, you know, we get stuff like this, all random stuff. And we have to organize them to, you know, as much as we can, like by, you know, not. And again, like we don't, we don't buy anything. Uh, this is all donation based, and in making things that people can actually, um, like, make sense of what it is, right? Because you know, if we get something that looks like this, which is a bag, 
of random stuff, it's very hard to move this to get it to the hands of other makers if it's just like a random bag. Uh, so we have to, because different makers will use different things. But when we try to use, um, uh, like, Aaron, do you mind holding this for a sec? Uh, so, so, for example, I know it's weird, but some are going to really love this, because I think this is actually cool, because it's a really high-end material. And this is like a nylon, like a like, fabric. Best to it's very hard to hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me better now? Can you hear yes. me better? Okay. Yes. I think it's just under the Awesome. So even like stuff like this, you see this, it's like a, a giant, you see how big it is? My hand is big, by the way. <laughs> but you see how enormous this thing is? This is Velcro, Velcro. And it's only one side of Velcro. So it's really nice that we got two of those. But they're all the same size. Side. <laughs> they're so. the same side. How do we sell that? So a lot of it is figuring out, like, how do we sell something that's incomplete? Because there's a lot of crafters and makers like yourselves that can use, like, one side of it, and that's okay. Oh, yeah, we recently got this from, like, a bridal place, <gasps> and it's all, like, oh. rhinestone trim, and there's, like, the gold and there's like a rose gold one they're real rhinestones on real chain and like it was going to be garbage and we've got silver ones where did the silver one go because the silver is just spectacularly sparkly mm. yeah we get things like little like hair combs and things like that um we do get quite a bit of lace and trim and tool and that kind of stuff as well yeah <laughs> yeah and like there's a camera I pose <laughs> um, yeah like buttons you know like all those things so this has already been organized but if you can imagine like all this stuff came all like mixed up right so we had to spend quite a lot of time on putting them you know uh, in different packages and just different um, like measure them cut them and we reuse everything everything in our space is reused we don't have new things but I don't think almost I don't think we have any in the year don't we yeah I don't think so maybe except pants <laughs> we buy pants <laughs> um but yeah like everything is like all the you know the furniture like the cardboard we even like use um the curb boxes to a ship because it's just a box <laughs> and also it's a bit of a laugh when somebody gets it and they're like hey it's not liquor it's fabric <laughs> um but yeah and the whole thing, the whole idea behind what we're doing is it is the notion that um Fabric is not waste, and it's just really trying to change the mindset of what waste is. So even if something, um, a lot of times, is a waste for one organization, uh, so we're trying to figure out, like, could it be a resource for somebody else? And that type of man mindset is, like, what really, oh, there you go, Hi. what really drives a lot of our decision-making as well about the space. So, um, so we will take almost anything, and as long as we can imagine who this can go to, we'll take it because that, that's what we, you know, we have to do to make sure things are, are not wasted, right? Because it's a lot of resources, the pressure stuff, like labor, money goes into things. So we want to make sure things are continuing kind of moving along and not wasted. Yeah, that's, that's our general mantra and what we do. And yeah, if you have any questions, please, please let us know. Yeah, yeah, just jump in, like anything you got. Unmute yourself if you if you are muted. But while you are unmuting yourself, I will tell you that Irina has very generously given you a 20% discount coupon, which is in the PowerPoint. You'll see it in a bit and uh, you'll be able to use that. You can order online or you can go to visit them and orders over $100. Am I correct? Yes. Orders, orders over $100 are free shipping. And that's anywhere in Canada, am I correct? Correct. Yes, correct. the States is over 150. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, so if you want to know more about it, step in now and ask these ladies your questions. Yeah, do you have any questions about like textile recycling, about scraps, anything if it comes in mind, even if you're in your area, if you're not local even, I'm happy to share with you some behind the scenes stuff that happens with textile recycling. What are, where's, uh, yeah, your, where's your location and Sorry? what are you, where 
where are you located? I'm guessing Vancouver, but just where and what are your hours for someone to come <laughs> so by? So we are we are in Chinatown in Vancouver. We are at 268 Kiefer Street, so like Kiefer in Maine, like in between Maine and Gore Street, and we're in the Sunwa building. We're on the fourth floor, so it's a little bit of a trek to get into our building. We do have like a gate at the front. You have to go through a security guard to get in um, and uh, an elevator up to our floor, <laughs> so we're a little bit of a journey, but it's always an adventure, right? It's, yeah. You got to keep things spicy, but um uh, what was the other question? We're open, We're open um, for in-person shopping uh, from Wednesdays to Fridays from 11 a.m. till 5.30 p.m. Yeah. I have actually a few questions for all of you. Um, when was the last time you decided to clear out some things from your own fabric stash and what did you do with it? Mm. Good question. Um, I, I will be in the next year. Yeah, I did a big um, like overhaul. I think it was when I was moving um, to go because I had lots and lots of fabric. I think I ended up with like two trash bags <laughs> worth of fabric. Yeah. Um, and I ended up donating it because I also had some miscellaneous patterns and notions and stuff. And I ended up donating it to a local theater that I work with all the time for the costume department. Awesome. Um, it's wonderful. Yeah. Did anyone else uh, downsize or kind of cleared out some of the things or no? Um, <laughs> it wasn't so much Never. downsizing, but what I do is I have a bin under my uh, sewing table and all the little bits. It's amazing mm -hmm. with lingerie sewing, how many little bits of fabric are left. And then um, we were using those to fill pillows for the homeless out in Chilliwack. But then because of COVID and everything, they didn't want to accept anymore. So we had mounds and mounds of these tiny little scraps. And now my friend who lives on the Sunshine Coast is making kitty and doggy beds for the local animal shelter. And she just stands oh. at, the, at her rotary cutting table and slices it into tiny little pieces. And so when I went up there recently, I took giant bags of uh, scraps for her. So it's ultimately being used. It's not ending up in the landfill. That's right. That's awesome. That's if right. I have just oh, north of Toronto, um, Value Village, which is a, a recycling store, um, they take textile remnants and old socks and underwear and they uh, recycle it into insulation. Oh, wow. I wonder so I if take... they do it here in BC because we've got Value Village too. They don't do it in Toronto. They only do it in Markham. Oh, okay. So I have to drive 25 kilometers to. Okay. That type of thing is definitely specific to a specific store. Not all right. like value villages yeah. would do yeah. something like that. Yeah. Right. I, um, I'm a teacher. I teach sewing. And if I have leftovers at home, I take stuff to school and I see what the students want to do with it. That's fabulous. Yeah. That's fantastic. Thanks, Monica. I love it. Does anybody else want to share? Linda, Margaret? No? Nope. I think Margaret. Can you hear me? Oh, there yeah. Hi. Okay. Hi. So I'm a quilter. I'm a <gasps> long armor. I'm a long armor. And so. I just donated a whole bunch of stuff to ladies I quote with on Wednesday. I'm in the Calgary area. Um, and they take it, they'll make gifts, they'll do all kinds of stuff. And I'm also started to make knitting bags for a yarn store in Belfast, Northern Ireland. Oh, wow. So I use all kinds of my recycled fabrics and I'm thinking I may need to take a trip out to you guys. So is there a hotel <laughs> close to you? Because <laughs> I'm not able to do <laughs> Yeah, because I'll take two days to drive there, fill up my car, yeah. bring a trailer. <laughs> Easy to <Absolutely. laughs> Vancouver has a lot of Vancouver has a lot of really great Airbnbs too. If you're into that as yeah. well, I yeah. just need a place to sleep. I'll come with an empty car. I have an issue. Here, <laughs> right? But the recycling is so so big. So I'm just trying to get. I need to come down. I have 200 bolts of fabric in my fabric room here. 
Oh, wow. And I'm thinking yeah. to you. <laughs> Can I put in my will that it goes to you guys? Because <laughs> you're actually <laughs> properly disposed of it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But I'm, I'm looking for something. I mean, you can always use it for trade, yep. you know, trade a, a trade of fabric oh. roll for something that you need, you know? You yeah, fabric <laughs> yeah, but maybe like with other participants also, you know, because yeah. what you're talking about is what we're doing essentially. It's like you are yeah. all like we're sharing the, you know, how you can move it like, pass it forward to other people so it's essentially absolutely absolutely so i'm looking for heavier fabric for these bags these knitting bags right and it's hard to find a heavier weight fabric quilting cotton doesn't quite cut it it's too thin mm -hmm. um, so i've been looking at upholstery stuff i'm looking at the stuff behind the two of you and i'm thinking mm, i think i need to drive out mm -hmm. i have a whole like home decor upholstery section here <laughs> that's what i want and yeah. just think it could all end up in northern ireland oh no. i love it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so Linda, have to, yes. just a word um if yes. you do drive out here we yes. have an amenity suite in other words a suite for guests at the complex where i live Oh my and gosh. you're very welcome to stay there. It's very inexpensive. I think it's maybe oh. like 50 bucks for the night or something. You won't get a hotel for that price. Oh, no. Oh, so so okay. Just let me know if that ever arises <laughs> and I can try and arrange that for you. Okay. Thank you so very much. And now, how far away from these girls is okay. this? Okay. <laughs> um, I'm in Surrey and they are no. downtown Vancouver. Not but, a problem. you know, if I'm here, I'll go with you and show you exactly oh, where oh. it is. Well, I may not have any room to bring you back, though, because my car That's might okay. be full. That's okay. I can take <laughs> the sky train home. I've done it before. <laughs> that would be lovely. And lovely. The, the other thing I wanted to mention as well is that for the longest time, I didn't make the trip to Fab Cycle because I was kind of a little bit nervous. It was a bit silly of me, really. Um, but I was a bit nervous of going to Chinatown. And, you know, it, it, it's a built up area with buildings yeah. and very little street parking. And I thought, oh, what am I going to do? And then one day I thought, you know what, Liz, you're a big girl. Pull up your big girl panties <laughs> and just do this. So mm -hmm. I drove into town and it's probably like a 40 minute drive into town if there's not traffic. Mm -hmm. And I then had got instructions that there was a parking garage and I found it super easy, went up the yep. parking garage. And then all you do is go up one flight of stairs to the elevator. Oh, nice. And okay. I tell you, it's so easy to go and visit them. It's easier than going to another textile place where you can't park here and you can't park there. Oh, so yeah. let me reassure you, once I okay. got over that first visit, it's been a piece of cake. Perfect. I will plan a trip. Okay. Um, Irina, um, oh, yes, yeah, Irina and Erin, anything more you want to say or anybody else want to ask questions of them? I'd like to know how they got started in this. Yeah, good question. Yeah, for sure. So it's a bit of a long story, but I'll really try to keep it short so you have more time with Les. That's okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> So um, I was involved in like textile recycling things uh, since about 2014, um, doing like a social entrepreneurship program with another organization. And I started another nonprofit called Framework Education Society. And we do community repair events. So we're like a fix it. So what that means is that uh, we would um, go to say like a library or community center and I would bring a bunch of like home sewing machines and a bunch of like <clears throat> like uh, supplies and you know zippers elastic and scraps for patches and then would invite other people to come to the event and all they have to do is just bring something they want to fix but here's the little catch we don't fix it for them uh, we would teach them how they can fix it themselves Perfect. so i'm not preparing your crotch pants but if you want to learn how to do it, I will sit down and show you yes. so you can learn that. So um, so we do those events quite a lot. Like we were really busy. We had about 50 events per year for a number of years before COVID. Wow. And COVID hit, you know, we can't do in-person mm -hmm. events because you got to sit like really close to the person while you like show them, you know, how to use a sewing machine for the first time. And so we stopped doing the events for two years and then now we're sort of back. Um, and, uh, but that's how it started. 
but and start doing events and then I realized you know I I love it but my heart is there because you really can feel you're like really connecting with people making a difference but it was very hard to make a living out of this because it's a free event and but somebody has to pay and it was really difficult to get grants and just go make a living out of this so I was like I need to figure something else that has like a larger scale and will able to still like be in this world where we they're writing textile ways we're working with people but something has more more to it so because I was already involved in that kind of world um, and I was working with other like the fashion designers and the Guru Fashion Week and other stuff it's kind of like a small world, right? Everybody connected to each other. I realized that um, a lot of the designers I've been working with, um, they're like, when they're thinking about textile waste, they think about clothing. A lot of times people do, but the other type of textile waste they have, it's what's called pre-consumer textile waste, which mm-hmm. is basically any textile that does not reach the consumer. So it could be things like, you know, end of rolls, like the, the yeah. bolts we have it could be things like samples like even if it's uh, like a full garment but it's a sample it's but it's not supposed to go to the uh to the consumer um and supplies of course and so that particular waste stream is actually quite large because the industry is really big and so i was starting to research like well what what are the options like what what do businesses do when they have to get rid of you know their bolts when like a designer decides, okay, I finished production, I'm not going to continue doing this, but I still have, you know, two bolts left. So they won't produce, they would just dump it because they take a lot of space. And so I said, okay, well, let's see what I can do. And so I started collecting this and it started becoming <laughs> like more stuff and more stuff coming in and realizing that um, there's like a whole gap that exists in our industry and the gap is between organizations like those fish fashion designers that have that particular textile waste uh, to people that can actually use this type of textile waste which is like hobby sewers that don't care if there's you don't have five bolts of the same fabric like you actually like the you know the people like the one meter fabric that can use it so that's how we found ourselves in that particular gap of being like the people that connect between the people that produce textile waste, the people can see this as a resource and not as waste. So it's been a bit of a journey, uh, but wow. we still, with framework, with like the nonprofit, we're still doing a lot of events, not a lot, but we're doing events, not as 50 per year, but we're doing one a month right now. And we're starting to see a lot more events going on. But honestly, um, this type of work we're doing with FabCycle right now is my full focus uh, because it's so massive, the problem. And I feel the impact we're making is even larger than doing individual events. Um, so, yeah, it's been interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, that is if, wonderful. Do you know if there's anything like that, like what you're doing in Toronto? Toronto? Uh, Toronto. I know there was some organization, I think called Match Match um, Match Point. Match point. I, I know they do something like with that stock fabric. I don't think it's exactly like what they're doing. I think what they do is more like they buy that stock fabric and then resell it. Um, but I'm not familiar with any other one in Toronto specifically. Okay, thank you. But but we're not the only ones to do that, just the, you know, like even like 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 somebody said, you can buy stuff like this in Value Village, right? So that oh, yeah. stuff exists everywhere. That's that's yeah. what makes it because yeah. it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. So, and somebody asked yeah. Arena how big your space is. Oh, it's not that big. I mean, this room is almost a thousand square feet. Um, it's like fairly narrow, but kind of like you can see here, and this is the back. And it's, oh. Yeah, it's about almost a thousand square feet. But then you've got a lot of warehouse. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's the thing. So this is the organized space. That's the space where we can function. <laughs> so, because you know you can operate when you have like all the stuff. Like in this, like it is a mess. It's like mentally, it's hard to function. So mm-hmm. we decided to separate the spaces so we can actually like be like healthier mentally <laughs> like not being overloaded with space because honestly it is overwhelming like it is very overwhelming a lot of times so and we have to we kind of figure out a one own way of like dealing with our own like feelings about stuff because it's uh, like it's really personal right like we're working but then there's all this stuff coming in and it's heartbreaking 
So this space is a thousand square feet. We have another room that is just a small storage. It's about like 300 square feet. And we have another warehouse in Langley, uh, which is another city outside uh, mm -hmm. Vancouver uh, that is 1600 square feet with just a warehouse for just scraps. Wow. And stuff. <laughs> so, but we're small, we're still a small team and, um, and it's tough, right? Because what we get is textile waste. A lot of times we don't get the super trendy stuff that other fabric stores have. Like, you know, we don't get linen a lot because we get textile waste, but people don't want, <laughs> you know? Mm. So, but it's stuff that are great, they're usable. We just have to make sure it goes to the people that can actually use them for what they are. So it's not a, like a regular fabric store, but we do have to like kind of compete for the attention of mm -hmm. the same people that would shop at other fabric stores because, you know, makers are makers, right? Mm -hmm. So not easy, but it's fun. It's gratifying. Mm. Yeah. Are there yeah, any other is. questions for Arena? I have kind of a fun anecdote that links into this. Um, there was a store in my hometown that sold like those bolt ends, you know, the same sort of fashion bolt ends. And I bought some fabric from there to make my prom dress. And it had like this kind of, it was, a, there was a solid color. And then there was like kind of this sheer overlay stuff that I used. At prom, two of my friends wore store-bought dresses that had that exact same <laughs> thing on it. I was just like, wait a second. I, I basically bought, you know, what wasn't created off of there. And it, it was hilarious. I got a picture with them because, That's you know. <laughs> well, I bet, I so bet they paid a lot more than you did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's amazing. They're just phenomenal. Yeah. You know, it's funny you said that we had those, not exactly those incidents, but like more like somebody coming in like, wait a minute, I've seen this fabric. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, you did, because it came from like a local designer, which I cannot say who, but it's like, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of a dead giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> so it happens, you know, it's fabric is fabric, right? It's like it has to pass pass along to people can make something out of it. And that's the, the main thing. So. Okay. Yeah. So ladies, did you enjoy that? Are you that all going wonderful. to go and have a look at fabcycle.shop? Yep. Please, okay. if you buy, you have to make something. Yes. Please don't buy for the sake of buying, because that's oh, how yes. we end up getting the stuff. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. We, we shouldn't be building our stashes. We should be using them up in making practical <laughs> things. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Arena. Really appreciate it. If you Thank want you. to stay, you're very welcome to stay, but I know you're busy. Thank you. Really appreciate all your time. It's been a pleasure. Please do reach out if you have questions or you just want to chat about stuff or you want to see if you saw something, Erin will be happy to show you. Or if you're around, Linda, if you're coming, we've got to meet. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye. Okay, so let's go back to the top and right. So I think what I'll do is um, I will go back to the um, screen sharing and um, you will see um, at some point on that PowerPoint and remember you'll get the video. So you could scribble it down now, but you will also have the video where it's printed on the video and that's the code that you can use to get 20% discount until the 30th of September. Um, so if you have not visited the thing before, you probably are going to want to do that. Okay, so I think what I will do is just make that smaller. And there we go. All right, so I um, that's my daughter-in-law. And it is a picture from last weekend. She's in London and they gave her a bridal, a baby shower, not a bridal shower. And uh, on the left, um, the baby is due any day now. It was the due dates the 29th of August, but her midwife has told her that it's going to be coming earlier. And I made the pink quilt on the left. And um, I would like you guys to chip in and give me ideas about how you think I should quilt this quilt because it is all here mm -hmm. okay it's all there 
uh, sandwiched with soft pink fleece. And um, I have the pins in it. And these are the two colors of thread. I'm going to just hold them up to the camera. These are the two colors of thread that I have yep. to use. And then you'll notice there's a little bag next to it. Well, let me tell you this daughter-in-law of mine, her name is Robin, is one very particular girl. She knows what she wants and she's not afraid to say it. So it was quite hard looking for pale pink fabric. Let me tell you, there wasn't much of it around. And in any event, I found a batch of it and I sent her photographs and she rejected all but one. They were already purchased. So then I went back and bought more at Quilt Canada and other places. And then eventually she said, yes, okay, those are all the ones she likes. So that's what's in this quilt. And I made her a diaper bag, which is what you see to your right. And what I did there was I just stitched in the ditch and then stitched diagonals on each charm square. So what I wanted to know from you guys is what ideas do you think I should do with this quilt? I don't want anything time consuming because I'm leaving in, yep. in what, two and a bit weeks to go. Okay. So first question for you, Liz. Yeah. I long arm, I long arm as a business. Right. So did you want this to be a quilt that your granddaughter, you know, li uh, lies on, spits up on, does all kinds of stuff? Yes. Like the usability of the quilt. You want it, so you want it to be a soft quilt. So your stitching should be no more than the width of your fist. Right. As opposed to doing dense quilting because you want it to be cuddly. Correct. Correct. That now is what I, I want. So I assume you're using your domestic machine? Yes. And, and just in the interests of speed, because free motion is not my top skill, I thought I would do walking foot quilting. Perfect, perfect. So since you've got a lot of squares on there, diagonal quilting would balance your right angles, your 90 degree angles. Yeah. So if you did diagonal quilting, that would actually make it balanced. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. A bit like what's on the bag. Exactly. So it's a nice... Uh, continuity between the bag and yeah. what you have so you're not putting batting or wadding in it right because no. you're going to use no. the fleece yeah. perfect because I wanted perfect. it to be like nice and soft actually I never make yeah. baby quilts with batting and backing yeah a lot of people don't they'll use minky or cuddle right which can be real pain when you cut it but that's yes. okay <laughs> I know. I, yes so do you know what the baby's name is going to be yes um, her, no, you name, have... her name is Cecily Florence. Oh, how lovely. Now, you do have an embroidery machine, right? Yes, I do. I'm going to make a label. Okay, good. Because I was going to say, I'm a big machine embroiderer. I love machine embroidery. I love, love, love it. So, I mean, you could always use your machine embroidery to do the quilting in it. Yeah. Because you can quilt in the hoop, get a couple of yeah. designs. And then, then you're just, you're done. It gets super, super cute quilting designs right um so if you're going to use your walking foot i would definitely do diagonals right yeah because then it's much quicker it's just straight up a diagonal and then along another and um, what do you ladies think about the quilt label should i do it in the corner of the bottom of the quilt before i quilt in other words in one of those blocks or should i do it separate and attach it to the back of the quilt so I, sorry to jump in again, but I do quilt labels as a business as well. So my I'm kind of a tyrant with quilt labels. Unless you want to embroider right on the quilt top, which you can do before you quilt it, yes. right? So you can quilt her name, you know, with love from grandma, la, 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 yeah. on it and then quilt it. Yeah. If you want to do a separate quilt, it's usually on the back, in the bottom, if you're looking at the back, bottom right-hand yes. side. Yes. But because it's a separate thing, it may, it won't be soft and cuddly. Exactly, for that's what I was thinking. It might scratch and rub. Correct, correct. Mm. So before you quilt it, I would actually just take the pins out yeah. and machine embroider it. In the, that's, yeah. Yeah, embroider it on the bottom right-hand corner. Great. I shall do that. Thank you for your advice, Sorry. Linda. That's <laughs> Sorry, great. 
No problem. Okay, so there's a, a choice of the feet that I intend to use. Um, obviously, I don't have the foot on the right. That's not a foot for my machine, but I thought I'd mention it because you may have a walking foot that looks like that. The ones on the left on the green fabric, those are the feet that I have for my genome. Um, I was just going to say, those are genome you, feet. Yes, many of you have genome machines and will recognize those feet. Obviously, I don't have a banana, so I didn't put a picture of a banana walking foot. That is a little different. But that's what I intend to use. And then, um, sewing tip of the month. Um, I um, have a, you know, we have the draw every month. And this month, um, you're going to get to choose between fold over elastic or quarter inch panty elastic. So I thought what I would do is I would show you a tip for fold over elastic that I learned at the Brabi. And I don't know about you, but I have found fold over elastic sometimes a little difficult to sew on so it doesn't go skew um, and have the stitching all neat or, um, you know, overstretch it or not stretch it enough. So let me show you, I'm going to switch. Let me escape out of that and stop sharing my screen. And now I'm going to go to my machine and I'm going to actually show you the tip that I learned, which is really cool. So in my machine at the top, I have water soluble thread. Now, um, I have just ordered today some water soluble thread, which I'm going to put on my uh, website because people at the Bra B, some of them were saying they couldn't find it easily and it has gone up a lot in price. So I ordered two different ones to give them a try to see which was which. You can also put it in your bobbin. All right. And uh, you will notice that I've got WS with a black Sharpie pen on this bobbin. Because if you put this back into your drawer and it's not marked as water soluble thread, you could be in trouble. <laughs> For example, if you were making a swimsuit. All right. So uh, this is the trick I learned. I've got, I believe, uh, let's just see. Uh, I can't remember now what color thread. I think I've got cream thread in the bobbin. And I've got a piece of stretch knit fabric here. Just pretend you're making a bralette or something like that. And here is my fold over elastic. Now, the way I used to do it was I would go to the iron and try very hard not to burn my fingers and iron this fold over elastic in half. Now, I have not done that today. All right. But it is one way you can do it to kind of tame that um, elastic a bit. Now, I'm just going to lean over and get myself this little leader. This is one of the things I showed in my class at uh, the Bra B. I I talked about making lingerie with your sewing machine. And that is my little leader because so often what happens is our fabric gets sucked down into the uh, machine and it is extremely annoying um, and it can damage your fabric too. So I'm just going to put a little pin in my fabric there. And my fabric is coming up to the halfway mark of my fold over elastic. And I am just going to start sewing straight from my leader onto my fold over elastic. And then I'm going to take my pin out because we do not want to sew over our pins. Now I could be stretching this fold over elastic a little. I'm just going to stretch it a teeny weeny bit. A lot of people don't stretch it at all. And they do one for one because they're just using it as a kind of bias tape. Well, it's not a bias tape, but it's a tape on the edge. Now, why am I using invisible thread in my needle? Well, this is the tip I learned at the B because I was used to use regular thread in the needle. All right, so there I'm going to stop and just take it out of the machine. And uh, what I would do is use regular thread and then look at this. The thread is showing on the back. So once I fold my elastic over, then I've, I've got some stitching that can be seen on the back. 
which may or may not be an issue depending on where you're using this fold over elastic. But the tip was to use water soluble thread, which is what is in my needle, which is here on the top of the fabric. That there is what was in my bobbin. You don't have to put it in both the needle and the bobbin. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it over and put a pin in again. And I'm just gonna do the little leader thing just because I don't want any dramas. And I'm going to change to my zigzag stitch. And I don't want a very wide zigzag. I'm just making my zigzag, uh, except that <laughs> I have to change now. So I am taking my um, uh, water soluble thread out. So sorry about that. I should have done this before. And I am going to thread up with a polyester thread. Now, this is a polyester thread that I got at Cork Canada from the wonderful booth. Um, it is, I hadn't seen it before, but I don't know how new it is. It may not be that new. And it's called Designer. And it is 100% polyester thread. And um, that is what you want when you're sewing lingerie and elastics. You want a thread that is strong. A cotton thread is not as strong as a polyester thread. So the only reason I'm using pink thread here is so that you can see it clearly on the camera. And I have a cream polyester sewing thread in my bobbin. All right, so back to my little leader again. And I have put a zigzag stitch of two stitch wide and two stitch long. So it's not a terribly huge zigzag. All right, let me take my pin out again. And I'm going to go all the way down. Now, when you're sewing and you want your stitches to be straight, look at your foot and look at your fold over elastic and decide what you're going to use as a guide. And I think that I'm going to, I've got a little red line there. You may not see it, just there in front of my fingernail. I'm going to ride that just along the edge of my uh, elastic. And then I keep myself going straight and it, it won't look like I've sort of been sewing like a drunken sailor. Okay, wandering all over the place. So there we go, all the way down to the end of my little sample. Let me take it out and let me show you. There is my lovely little zigzag, which obviously if I was making a garment or something, um, a swimsuit or a bralette or something like that, I would have done it in a matching color thread. Unless, of course, I wanted a um, contrast. And now the beauty of it is when I wash it, this thread on the back is just going to be able to come straight out because the water soluble thread on the first row of stitching, that straight stitch is going to dissolve. And so the bobbin thread on the back, the straight stitch bobbin thread will just come right off. And then all I will have is my stitching on the back and my stitching on the front. Now, is that not clever? I thought it was super clever. What do you think, ladies? Okay, so that was the uh, tip number one, the sewing tip of the month number one. And I'm going to show you, actually, you know what? I'm not going to go back to sharing. I'm going to show you with my camera because it'll be a lot easier. All right, so let's clear the deck here. And I wanted to show you what you do if you have got a favorite pair of panties Let's bring this camera up higher so you can see better. All right. So what I did the other day, this was a pair of panties that I have had for a number of years. And it was looking, you know, how our underwear starts eventually with all the washing to look a bit grungy. All right. A bit gray. And so I dyed it a pink color, but it still looks faded and washed out. So I decided, you know what? It's time to get rid of these panties. But they fitted so well that what I did was I cut all the elastic off. So I cut the elastic off at the top and on the legs. And that is the front. And this is the back. And it was a brand that I bought. I didn't make. 
and they had stamped the brand on there. So there, of course, is the back of my panties. You can see I have got good coverage on my bottom, which is what I like. And then this, of course, is the um, gusset. This is the back of the gusset, and this is the front of the gusset. All right, so it would go like round there. So what I have done is I have cut those out very carefully with my um, duck build scissors so that I didn't waste any fabric. I got right up close to the elastic and cut it off. But remember that my elastic was sewn onto some fabric. So what I will do is I am now going to make myself a pattern, but I am going to add a quarter of an inch all the way around where there are side seams. There are my side seams. They're very, it's very small. All right. So if you don't like a high waist, these were great bikini panties. So that is all my side seam will be. Obviously, I'll add a quarter of an inch there. I'm going to add a quarter of an inch along the waist and a quarter of an inch on the leg. And I will then cut a pattern out with those three pieces. And I will be able to hopefully make another pair of panties that fits me as well as those did. All right, so let's um, go back to the uh, screen share. Uh, please stop me at any time if you've got questions. Um, you know that I am always open to that. So we've looked at that slide and uh, let me just quickly make it full screen. Right. Um, there's no silly questions, as you well know, so you are very, very welcome to ask me questions here. Um, we've still got time. We've got a few minutes left, and I don't mind going over. You know that too, but I know you're also busy people, so if you have to leave, so bang on my five o'clock or your eight o'clock, uh, depending where you are, um, then feel free, and I will send you the uh, recording. Um, as far as I know, it's still recording. And uh, you can also contact me on my Facebook group um, and by email. All right. So what the draw will be this time for July, and I have my big glass jar. All right. And I today went through and put all the things in there. There's nearly 60 of these little things here. And whoever wins... Oh my goodness, Kay walk up. It's your day, my darling. All right, so you win and you get your choice of um, fold over elastic or a quarter inch um, a panty elastic. And I will give you two packages of the fold over elastic and one black and one white or two black and two white three meters each of the panty elastic. So just let me know what you want. And it's not just that color of fold over elastic. Go to my website, Kay, and have a look. There's a whole bunch of different colors. Don't put it through the cart on the website. Just email me and tell me what you want and we'll sort that out. Okay, so congrats on that. And um, then I wanted to show you some show and tell. Oh. Did anybody have a question? No. Okay, so you'll remember a couple of months ago, the uh, giveaway or the draw prize. Um, and for those of you that are new, the draw prize happens almost every month. And, and I'll tell you why it's not every month in a moment. Um, we have a different prize. And um, if you post pictures on the Facebook group, that's Sew and Learn with Liz Thompson, you paste pictures of completed projects that you've made. It does not have to be something that was in a class with me. But if it was in a class with me, you get double the tickets. So if you made, let's say we did a little zipper bag and you made three zipper bags, you end up with six tickets in the drawer. If it's something that you made elsewhere, we still want to see it. We love show and tell. Uh, so then you will get one ticket for each completed item you make. And this picture is here because Carol McKinnon uh, won. Beautiful. Yes, isn't it lovely? That's such a funky uh, poly chiffon with high heel shoes on it. And I love that she's teamed it up with that orange top. It just looks great. 
So Thank she you, and I have had so many compliments on it. <laughs> oh, excellent, Carol. I'm so glad about that. I made one for myself as well, but it's been too hot to wear it lately. So I may take it with me to South Africa and wear it there because it's still winter there. Okay, mm -hmm. now Anne has been real busy. She did my bralette class in January this year. And um, these are bralettes that she's made. And do you want to say something about them? Tell us what you did. Um, the top one with the, the CK was a Calvin Klein tank top that didn't fit me anymore. So I took it apart. And actually, that one fits really well. Excellent. Um, the one on the right, the black one, is a kit that I got from you, Liz, for yeah. a bralette kit. And it's the uh, Barrett Bralette. And um, it's, I think the next time I do it, I would not put the elastic exposed. I would turn it up because the cups are a little tiny bit big. But I love the back of it with the way the lace is. Great. And the one on the left is um, a Watson bra. And I have it here, but it needs a bit of altering. I didn't okay. use any structured fabric in it. I used stretch lace and, and trico. Yeah. And it's a little bit big in the cups. Okay. So, Can you tell me, Anne, where in the cups is it big? Is it big at the top or big at the bottom? It's big at the side. If you look, I don't know if you can see what my screen, but it's just at the side where the, um, the cup meets the, the frame. Okay. So... I'm not sure if that's the, because I should have used a, a, a more structured fabric. No, the Watson is made for knit. Yeah, so it's it's a little bit big on me, so. Okay. If, if you can be bothered to do it, you can always unpick that seam and cut it down slightly mm. and redo the seam, but I know it's a palaver. No, Liz, I'm, I'll make another one. <laughs> <laughs> but what well, I did. I said you may not want to. <laughs> But what I did do is um, I made one out of an orange um, cotton lycra, which fit, fit perfectly. But the second one I did, the white one, I used, um, I did a technique where the seams were hidden. So the oh, lining was hidden. Yes, and I'm yes. much, much happier with Me it. Me too. Me too. I much prefer happier. that. Yeah. Yeah. I just much made that bra I told you about earlier, that Freya bra. And I didn't do that because it just called for one layer. Beverly Johnson does that with quite a lot of her bras. And do you know that the lace that was in the seams is scratching me? I'm not I'm surprised. I'm so disappointed. So I'm going to have yeah. to get Trico tape and put it over the seams and cover them because it, I love the bra, but uh, there's no way I could wear it for more than about an hour. And then my nipples and everywhere are scratching <laughs> and itching, you know, which is mm. not very pretty if you've got to keep scratching yourself. <laughs> okay, thank you, Anne. And then um, the one on the left uh, is Alison. I don't know if she's with us today, but she she sent in this picture on the web uh, on the uh, Facebook group, and she used her embroidery machine to actually stitch on her cleaning cloths. And I thought, what a brilliant idea! Because I can never remember what cloth is meant for what. And so she actually embroidered on them. So I thought that was a really brilliant idea. And then on the right, it was part of my birthday gift from my friend Karen, who I don't believe was able to be with us today. Her husband has hurt himself. And um, she's also got her mom-in-law, who's very elderly, staying with her. So she's kind of got her hands full. So um, she made those very cute little labels on their nice big kind of like kebab sticks to put in my uh, containers on my patio where I'm growing herbs and veggies. So they're, you know, cilantro and parsley and all those things. And she used her embroidery machine for that too. So I was very thrilled with that. So these are just ideas that you can use. I was particularly thrilled with that gift. And then Kay recently made a beautiful quilt, which she also posted on the Facebook group. So you can scroll down and look at it. And she also did a card for the baby shower to go with the quilt. And that is embroidery on her embroidery machine. Is that not clever? Um, so I thought I'd show that to you as well, because you don't only embroider on fabric. You can embroider on all sorts of different things. Here it was cardstock. So thank you for sharing that, Kay. And then 
I need to tell you before we sort of close, I'll obviously ask for questions, but um, I am leaving in just over two weeks time to go to South Africa. I have not seen my brothers for uh, well over three years. And one has had a stroke and the other one um, got COVID very badly and he's got long COVID. So big sister is going to kind of see how the land lies and get bossy with them. <laughs> and um, so I'll be away actually probably for almost for two months. Um, I'll be in South Africa for over a month and then we're going away somewhere else as well. So there is not going to be a So With Liz Club in September and October. But we'll be back in November on uh, the 9th of November. If that has to change, I'll obviously put it on my uh, Facebook group and my website. Um, but I would love you to give me ideas of what you want to see in the group, um, in, in terms of our sewing group. Uh, the other thing um, is that I'm going to be making a video, probably not before I leave, but maybe if I have time, I will, of that little pink bag. Um, because the one I made for my daughter-in-law is a little bigger as a diaper bag, but some of the squares I used, I ended up making four bags. And so I was videoing myself as I was sewing, and I will make a video of that, and I'll put it on YouTube for you to follow. Um, you know, with the zipper and the lining and the little handles and everything. So I will do that for you. And I'll post, obviously, on social media when it's ready. So um, the other thing I wanted to mention, some of you already know, because I have put it on social media and the Facebook group already. But um, the and I think I started talking about it earlier, is that we're going to uh, next week, Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific. I'm going to have a meeting, a Zoom meeting just like this, to discuss what we can do with a lingerie sewing group. And as I said, I don't want it to be terribly structured because I don't really have time to do that preparation. I'm happy for other people to do preparation and then bring it. Um, it will be free, of course. And it'll be a place where you can get support and exchange ideas and say, hey, I don't know where to buy this. Where can I get that? So I know that I don't have a full supply of things on my website um, because I'm just a very small business, but I can, I'm very happy to point you in the direction of people who do have more things on their website than me. And other people may have heard of places uh, that I haven't heard of. I just came across one the other day and I thought, wow, they're in Canada. I didn't even know they existed. So we can kind of share ideas like that. So. Any questions before we kind of finish off? Liz, could you put up the, um, the FabCycle uh, contact information? You missed that slide. Absolutely. Let's go back to that. Come on. Oh, no, I must have gone past it. There you go. Here we go. All right, so it's just fab fabcycle.shop is where you go to shop with them and slash discount slash so club Liz 20. But as I say, you'll get the recording. So if you lose the scrap of paper you're writing it on or you can't remember, just uh, watch the recording and scroll to this part in the recording. If you want to uh, have a look at the Instagram, um, they are at Fab Cycle Van. And every, not every Tuesday, I think it's every second Tuesday, they have an unboxing where they show you the new things that have arrived. And Erin uh, is the, the manager of the shop. Irina is kind of the head honcho. And um, Irina is hilarious. Uh, sorry, Erin uh, uh, is hilariously funny. And she'll do all this prancing. She's had some experience in theater and things like that. So you'll enjoy those unboxings. It's a big laugh. And then you also get, you know, first dibs at the new things because straight after the unboxing, they put them on the website, um, which is fabcycle.shop. So I did sort of pro uh, promote them quite a bit today. Um, but I, I just wanted to make you guys aware of places where you can often get stuff cheaper than you can get at the retail stores. And then also, I'm going to throw this open. If you live in Vancouver and you want to go to Fab Cycle next week, 
I am going to drive from Surrey to downtown. I have to go to Dresso, I have to go to Fab Cycle, and I have to go to another place called Our Social Fabric. So if you want to come for the ride, you are very welcome. Just email me and we'll sort out uh, something. Obviously, if you don't live in Vancouver, I'm sorry, that's not going to work for you. But I just thought it would be easier because gas is so expensive if we could sort of share expenses and I'll show you exactly where to go. Um, there are four stores that, that I've got next Thursday that I'm happy to show you. You don't have to spend money if you don't want to, but it would be a fun outing. So just let me know if you're interested. Anything from anybody before we shut? Have a wonderful holiday, Liz. Thank you very much. And we Thank look forward you. to seeing you in November. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. Anne. I'd like uh, you to do something sometime with the surger. I just got one and I need some tips. Okay. Who is that? Carol. Okay. Absolutely. I can certainly do that. Um, it, it specifically, you are you wanting like a project on the surger or are you wanting just a whip around and what different things you can do in a surger? Well, I've done a few things so far. I did the, the scar, the infinity scar. Right. And I made the little um, harem pants for my new grand, great granddaughter. Right. But I'd like to get into maybe making some uh, t-shirts and that type of thing for the grandkids, great grandkids. Sure. Okay. We'll work that into something in November or December, okay? Sounds great. Liz, Liz yes. it's, it's Michelle. Yes, I Michelle. I would love it if you could do, if you have the opportunity to do a video of um, a fabric market or a fabric shops while you're in Africa. Oh. Because I'm sure true. they're different. Oh. Like that, that yes. would be incredible. That's a very good idea, Michelle. In fact, one of uh, my friends, she actually lives in Germany, but she went to school with me in South Africa. And uh, she's actually a ballet teacher. She was a prima ballerina, but she, now she teaches ballet. I guess at my age, she's a bit old to be a prima ballerina. In any event, she has just been on a fabulous visit to South Africa and Kenya. And Kenya and she knows my interests and she told me of a place to get lace uh, very near where I'm staying right when I get to South Africa. So I'm definitely going to go in there. It's apparently a place that sells African crafts and they sell supplies as well. And she said she saw rolls and rolls of lace. So who knows what I might bring back. And what it is, the proceeds of it go to an AIDS foundation to help with AIDS, because of course AIDS is still pretty rough in South Africa. So yes, that's a brilliant idea, Michelle. I will for sure um, look into that. And then also a lady who was at the Bra Bee lives in Cape Town, and I'm going to be in Cape Town where my other brother, brother lives, and I'm gonna ask her to show me where there are some stores in Cape Town. So I will take videos of those too, for sure. Anything else? I just wanted to double check. You said that you were still sending out emails regarding next week's Zoom. Yes. yes. Okay. I was waiting to gather in a whole lot more emails and do a batch. So if I don't do it today, I will definitely do it tomorrow. Okay. And then there'll no doubt be stragglers who'll come in over the weekend and then I'll send out another one on Monday. Cool. All righty. And again, you don't have to register or anything for it. You can just come into the Zoom. And if you can't make that time, just let me know and I'll send you the recording afterwards. Anybody else want, got something they want to say or ask? I'm coming with you next week. Don't give up my spot in the car. Okay, oh. Kay, I will keep you a spot. <laughs> <laughs> you already asked me. I know, I, I, I know I did. I think I responded, but I'm not sure. And I haven't read my emails today. I've been a bit busy. Um, my husband and I, I know it sounds very sort of first world and over the top, but we're going to South Africa for almost six weeks. And then we come back and uh, we booked to go on a cruise. And just on Monday, we heard that Princess have cancelled all cruises on that ship for the rest of this year. And really? uh, apparently they haven't got enough staff. So... Um, because they don't have enough staff, 
sorry, I'm just going to move something here. And um, so we've been scrambling, trying to find another cruise. And the one that we're currently looking at um, is the day after we get back from South Africa, it leaves Vancouver. So <laughs> it's going to be pretty hectic. I said to my husband, we'll just have to pack twice and we'll pack before we go to South Africa, we'll pack for the cruise and then literally come home, wash clothes, put more in the suitcase and skedaddle the next day. And the reason that we're doing that is because, um, you know, my husband, some of you know, my husband is not very well. And um, this time we've got, we actually just paid for the medical insurance today. And it is so expensive because we can't risk him being somewhere else in the world and not have medical insurance. So I don't know how much longer we're going to be able to do this and keep paying the medical insurance fees. So I'm kind of making hay while the sun shines <laughs> and I'm going on as much travel as I can, seeing as my business is flexible and I have retired from my full-time job. So uh, don't feel too jealous. It's just because I know that in a couple of years time, I won't be able to do it anymore. Okay, everybody okay? All righty, I shall see you in November and I'll have lots of tales to tell. Have a great time. Thank you very Thank much. You. Have a Bye, safe Bye, everybody. Trip. Bye.